Hey, welcome back to the Backyard Professor Chess videos. I'm going to do this particular game over this wood board to see how this works out so I can show you Black's side of things. Um, there's been a lot of people asking me about the French defense and can't you show a game where Black wins. I found a beautiful Grandmaster game using the French defense. It was by Mikhail Tal and Victor Korchnoi. This was the 25th USSR Championship in Riga, 1958. Tal played white. Korchnoi played the black pieces. And I'm having ice cream and apple pie, too. Oh, crap. I dropped ice cream on the bishop square. That can't be good for the bishop. Anyway, here's this game. You're going to love this game. It's a good game. Okay, so it opens in the classical French defense, e4, e6, and then d4, d5. And then Tal brings out his knight to c3. And Korchnoi usually played the bishop to b4. And then Tal went e5, Korchnoi went c5. He challenged the bishop with the a3 pawn thrust, and the bishop takes the knight. b takes c3, and we're to knight e7. This was a typical typical favorite of the world champion Mikhail Botvinnik, and Korchnoi really played it up good with this one. This was one of Korchnoi's favorite setups, uh, favorite defenses to play as black, and he was a master of it. Queen came up to g4, knight bumped up to f5. I hope you can see that. Good enough with, uh, that's, that's actually a little better. Yeah, that's a little better. He came up here to knight f5, and then bishop d3 hitting the knight, h5 hitting the queen, the queen drops back to h3. And they're in the, uh, they're, they're still in the beginning phase, and C takes D4. So he's breaking into the middle, and this, this is the critical uh, position of the variation because they need to establish the center, and Tal does Knight F3, and this isn't in conjunction. It, they put a question mark and an exclamation point on it, Queen came to c7, and this is an important improvement. In fact, it gains him a tempo because from c7, the queen is hitting both e5 and c3 at the same time. So it's a good. It's also a good defensive maneuver against b7 if the rook ever comes to here. So that's an all-purpose move for the queen. The rook does come to b1, actually, and then d took c3. So he's got an incredible pawn on c3 already right there, pressing the advantage. Tal pushes the g4. Knight bumps back to e7 here, and then g takes the h5, opening the h-file for black, but we shall see. This could become a a dangerous pass pawn uh, if he plays his cards right. Course noise bringing out his knight. Tal brings out his bishop to f4, and this is apparently the best move. Knight to g6. This is really interesting. So what he's doing is he's hitting the e5 pawn twice here, and yes, he can't take it because the pawn is pinned to the queen by the rook. So that's a terrific move that's hitting the bishop. And uh, it's, it's a very good move by Korchnoi. Bishop bumps down to 
G3, and then of course the E5 pawn has gone, and Korchnoi's center appears to be stronger. Now, he's got the bishop pair. Tal has the bishop pair, and Korchnoi's bishop hasn't done much yet, but the way the game is being set up with the way the pawns are is going to be favorable to the knights. And the knight will take the e5. Uh, here Tal is exchanging, and the, the explanation is he shouldn't exchange the pieces uh, so much. He's going to need his pieces, so doing an exchange like this only can help black. Tal moves his king to f1. Bishop comes up to d7. Queen to h4. Uh, they're saying he should have done something different. There's a lot of interesting variations, as Korchnoi and Tal in their game it would be. I don't have time to do the variations. I'm just showing you the main idea with the French defense, which is really kind of nice. It's a good defense for black if you play through it a little bit. And then the queen takes e5. So one by one, the pieces are coming off the board, but Korchnoi maintains his strong center, and the queen side is just in a complete shambles over here with white. There are just too many isolated pawns here, and Korchnoi's are all nice in a row. So at this point, there can be no question, Korchnoi is winning this game. No doubt about it. Queen takes e5, and then rook takes the b7. So Tal does get another pawn. And of course, rook is just going to challenge the rook. So they take the rooks off the board. Rook takes rook. Queen takes the b8. And this can only help Korchnoi at this point. Queen to g4. King comes over here to f8. Rook goes to g1. A good, a good potential attack on Korchnoi's king without question. But then he pushes the pawn to g5. Tal will, ch will charge forward with the h takes g6 on passant move. And now here comes this pass pawn that looks really interesting. Uh, and then, uh, let's see. h takes g6. And the king goes to g7 here, and then h4 comes along. You can see the kingside pawns are coming on hard. He's going to bump his a5 pawn up here. Then rook comes up to g3. And queen is going to come down here to b1 check all the way up the aisle. King bumps up to g2. Queen comes back to b7, keeping track of that long diagonal against the king here. Tal continues pushing his kingside pawns, which is really starting to look pretty good here. d4, discovered check, connecting two pawns here. And bishop comes to e4 to put the pressure on the queen. The bishop simply comes here to c6, and the bishops will swap. Bishop takes c6, queen takes c6, check. King bumps down to g1. Queen will come up here to d5. Now Tau moves his queen over, and what they're going to do now is they're going to change out queens, which can only help Korchnoi at this point, because Tau's pawns the single isolated pawns, whereas Korchnoi has these two connected, only favors black. Uh, and Tal thought he saw a combination here that was really going to help him. And it didn't. So the rook takes h6. And what we have here is a very difficult... Queen takes h6, check. They wanted to exchange queens. Tal sacrificed his queen, thinking he had a combination. He thought he was going to get through, but the problem is now the queen takes g3, check. And it was at this point that Tal resigned because 
Yes, the pawn can take the queen without question, but then black king takes this pawn. The king comes up to here. The king moves up. The king moves up. Black takes the opposition and can drive the, black, the white king back. And he has four connected pawns here that he can lead into paradise. So that was Courtenoy defeating Tal using the French defense. I thought that was a really instructive game. That's probably a little bit different look than what you're used to without that great big chessboard. Uh, I personally think it's easier on the big chessboard, but the advantage of doing it like this is you can actually see it from Black's point of view. On the other hand, if I do the games from the big chessboard, you can play with your own chess sets. So let me know what you think. If you want me to go back to the big chessboard, I will. I'm going to anyway. Um, I, I personally like the big board better, but I have to set up with the white always on the bottom and the black always on the top. And it seems to me it's easier to see white's point of view than black's point of view on that big chessboard. So anyway, as always, here's some variety. Remember, we're doing good, we're having fun, we're being happy, and we're always enjoying life because we're continually improving ourselves, no matter what part of life we're talking about. So, happy chessercising. Remember, we are going to bed early so that we can get our beauty sleep, especially me. <laughs> and I will see you in the next Backyard Professor Chess video.